evaluate the following over all values theta, where theta is in between 0 and 2 pi, including 0 and 2 pi. The first is the inverse of sine of 1 half. The inverse of sine means that we're looking for a value theta, an angle, such that sine of that angle equals 1 half. So what is that angle? Well, we know that sine, or we can remind ourselves that sine of theta equals, on the unit circle, equals the y values. And that's why we refer to that unit circle a lot, because we have all these coordinates here. So we're saying, where on this unit circle do we have a coordinate, a y coordinate of 1 half? Well, we see one right here. And there's another one. It's going to be over here. So when theta is pi over 6 or 5 pi over 6, in those are the values in between 0 and 2 pi, where this happens, then the sine of pi over 6, or the sine of 5 pi over 6, is 1 half. So we're going to give answers of pi over 6, or 5 pi over 6. On to the next one. The inverse cosine of the square root of 2 over 2. Well, cosine of theta equals the x-coordinate on this unit circle. So we're saying, where on this unit circle does the cosine of theta equal, or where is the x value equal to negative square root of 2 over 2? Well, that happens here and here. So those are at the angles 3 pi over 4 and 5 pi over 4 radians. The next one is the inverse tangent of the square root of 3. The tangent, the tangent function is sine over cosine or y over x. So this one takes a a little bit more work. We can't just look and, and see the numbers. But we know we're going to have a square root of 3 in there somewhere. We're going to say the tangent of what angle equals the square root of 3. That's what we're saying. So where would we see y over x equaling square root of 3? Well, we're going to need the square root of 3 in the numerator. So let's try this pair. Let's see if that works. Square root of 3 over 2 divided by 1 half and that does work that if you work that out that works out to the square root of 3 so wherever we see the coordinates of 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2 and they both have to be the same sign because we have a positive square root of 3 that's what we're gonna find so we have pi over 3 that's one of the answers and the other one is going to be way down here because they're both negative. And a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So we'll have 4 pi over 3 as another solution to that inverse tangent of pi, uh, square root of 3. So 4 pi over 3. OK, cosecant, the inverse cosecant of negative 2. This one is a, the, the uh, cosecant and secant and, and cotangent, and specifically their inverses. These get a little bit more tricky, but we can work through it with a, a little thought and just some concentration on, on what's going on here. So we're thinking about where is the inverse of sine, or we're trying to think of the inverse sine of negative one half. And that's because cosecant is the inverse of sine. So when we're taking the inverse, cos uh, the inverse cosecant function of what we're evaluating here is going to be the inverse sine 
of the reciprocal of what we had for the cosecant. Okay, so we're looking at inverse sine of negative one half, or that is, let's see, where do we have a y value of negative one half? I see that right here and again over here. So we have 7 pi over 6 radians and 11 pi over 6 radians. Inverse secant of 1. So that's like saying where is the inverse cosine 1, reciprocal. And that's because the secant is the reciprocal of the cosine. So where do we see uh, an x value of 1? Aha! We see it right here. And that's the only place we see it. So the inverse secant of 1 is 0 radians and 2 pi radians. All right, the last one. The inverse cotangent of negative 1. You may see a pattern here of what's going on. So we're saying, that's like asking, what is the inverse tangent of the reciprocal of this? Well, the reciprocal of negative 1 is just negative 1. So we're saying, where do we see, on this unit circle, where do we see where y over x equals negative 1? And let's see, y over x has to equal negative 1. Well, we know that y and x are going to have to be equal to each other, but just a different sign. We see that at the 5 pi over 4, oops, that's, those are the same sign. Let's, let's try that again. We see that at 3 pi over 4 and at 7 pi over 4. So we write in the inverse cotangent of negative 1 is 3 pi over 4 and 7 pi over 4. So again, for these inverse functions, you're looking for the value in radians. You're looking for the angle, which when evaluated at sine or cosine or tangent or, or so on, would give you this number that's in parentheses. And that's the way the inverse trigonometric functions work.